Welcome to basic setup of the Vista 20P home alarm system, part 11. Today I'm going to show you how to install a second 6160 custom alpha keypad. Looking at the training center with that we've used up to this point, you can see we only installed one keypad and this was required for programming. In the average house, the keypad would have most likely been installed near the front door. But it just makes sense to also have a keypad near the back door. Additionally, in my opinion, there should be a keypad in the master bedroom. You spend eight hours a night in there, and when the alarm goes off in the middle of the night, you shouldn't be walking through the dark house to get to the keypad to find out why the alarm is activated. Another reason why you might need a second keypad is, will be if you want to take advantage of your partitions in your alarm. Remember, partitions allow you to have an alarm in the house, as well as a detached building, both that can be controlled independently. To do this, you need a keypad for partition one, as well as a keypad for partition number two. Okay, I've talked about adding a lot of keypads. How many can I have? The Vista 20P can handle eight keypads, as well as two additional graphical user interface pads. Just a note of caution, this many keypads would take a lot of power, so we'll talk about that later in the video. Let's get started on the install. When you open up your box, you'll find your keypad, some decals, and an instruction sheet. To properly install the wiring, you'll look at this table right here. The center column of the table simply tells you the name of the data signal that's on the wire. The left column explains the physical hookup on the actual keypad. You can see the keypad circuit board has terminals marked to match that table. The final column tells you the color of the wire that you will be using. These colors actually correspond to the color code requirement that is called out in the Vista 20P alarm panel. Let's take a closer look at the schematic on the door. On the left hand side of the schematic, you'll see contacts 4 through 7. The black wire goes on 4, red goes on 5, 6 gets green, finally yellow goes to 7. Here it is in real life. These are the contacts you're hooking up to. Power comes off of these two, and the data lines are on these two. Let's move back over to the keypad. First you have to gain access to the circuit board. Do this by removing the back cover. On the bottom there's two tabs. Push them. The back cover pops right off. Now you can route your wiring through the hole in the back cover. You'll then hook up the four wires to the terminal on the keyboard. Red goes to positive, black to negative. The yellow wire goes to the Y and the green wire goes to the G. If I was a betting man I might even think that Y and G mean yellow and green. Let's spice things up and put some action into this movie. Here's a hands-on demonstration on how to hook up the control panel. You'll need a small Phillips screwdriver. Once again, the terminals are marked, so you really can't get them in the wrong spot. Once you've hooked up the green wire, you're all done. You can move on to hooking up the Vista 20P panel. The first thing you'll notice, there's already a set of wires there from the first 6160 you installed. Just take a number two Phillips, loosen the screw, insert your wire underneath the terminal, and then tighten the screw back down. We're really kind of hoping that when you finish this process, all the wires under each terminal will actually be the same color. And if they're not, you might want to take a second look at your wiring. Well, that's about it. You're finished doing the wiring. Now that the keypad's hooked up, we have to find a way to get the two computers to talk to each other. We do this through addressing. So, let me take a shot at trying to explain it to you. What we have right now is more than one keypad, all of which are wired to exactly the same terminals, and the main processing chip on the motherboard has to sort it out and figure out who's talking when. I think I can relate this to a real-world situation most of you have dealt with. The terminal lugs collect large amounts of information. That's the same thing as a post office. The person in charge of the post office is the postmaster general. And the information arriving comes from houses in the form of letters. If only one house sends a letter to the post office, then the postmaster can find the letter pretty easily. The problem arises when multiple houses send multiple letters to the post office. Now the postmaster doesn't know which letter came from where. His solution? He created post office boxes. Each house is assigned an individual box. Now when a letter is found in a box, the postmaster knows exactly where that letter came from. To translate this back into computers, 
We replace the P.O. boxes with addresses. So addresses are simply unique locations inside the computer memory. Each address will have only one keypad right into that specific location. So the Vista 20 knows where that message came from. Currently, we only have one keypad hooked up, and it's attached to address 16. This causes a problem with efficiency. Even though we're currently using only one address, all the unused addresses have to be looked at in order to find out if there's a message waiting there. But there's a way to fix this problem. Unused addresses are turned off. The Vista 20 doesn't even know they exist until you turn them back on. So it's time to add a second keypad. Step 1. Go in and turn on address number 17. Then go into keypad number 2 and tell it to write to address 17. It's that simple. Now that we understand them, how do we turn on addresses? Taking a look in the installation manual, we'll find this table. This column lists the component you hook up to the Vista panel. This column will tell you which address will be assigned to that component. Over here is where we'll find the instructions for activating or turning on the address. Finally, if a component should fail, these codes will be displayed on your keypad. They're meant to assist in troubleshooting. What we're interested in is this block right here, specifically your keypads. Your first keypad was hooked up to address number 16. By factory default, this address is already on, and you cannot make any changes to this address. The second keypad we install will go to address 17. And to activate it, we need to do some programming in data field 190. Let's take a closer look at this 190 thing. Field 190 needs two pieces of information. Which partition is the keypad assigned to? Our choices are partition 1, 2, or common, which means both. And the second is, which sounds do you want to be functional on the keypad? Your first choice is no suppression. This means the keypad will make any noise that it's capable of making, whether it's a hoot, holler, or an R2-D2. Your second choice, suppressing the arm and disarm chimes, as well as the entry and exit beeping. Moving on, you can suppress chimes. The chime they're talking about here is this door and window chime function. This beeps any time a door or window is opened. And finally, you can shut off all of the notification noises. The only beep you'll get is when you press a button on the keypad. Alright, enough theory. Let's do it. It's absolutely required that each keypad have its own address. If you didn't originally set up the system, I recommend you find out what your keypad addresses are. This is very easy to do. Go to your first keypad, hold the 1 and 3 keys down for a few seconds. The keypad will come back and say the current address for this one is 16. Now here's the pad I'm trying to install. It's shipped as address number 31. 31 is what they call non-addressable. As near as I can tell from my research, this was used on older keypads that were hardwired to a particular address. The good news? When new keypads are set to 31, there's no way they can accidentally match a previously installed keypad. Let's go ahead and enable address 17. We'll start out by entering program mode 4112-800. Asterix 190. Press 1 for partition 1. Then 0 to enable all sounds. Finally, asterix 99 to exit programming mode. Now we'll set the new keypad to address 17. Completely power down the system, then power it back up. Within 60 seconds, hold the 1 and 3 key for at least 3 seconds. Enter 0 and 0 to clear out the old address. Then enter 1, 7, asterisk to select address 17. There will be a brief pause. The Vista panel will link up with that new control panel. And when the Vista finishes rebooting, you're online. Right now. Yes, it really is that simple. When you're all finished, you'll have two keypads that will mirror each other. For those of you that have the morbid curiosity, what happens if I do set two keypads to the same address? Well, I've traveled that road. Here I've set two keypads to address 16. Let's take a look. The result? The keypad will accept five button pushes, then just lock up. Oops, I just thought of an exception to what I said about the keypads mirroring each other. When keypads are programmed to different partitions, they will only show the data that affects the partition they're assigned to. Let me show you how to assign a keypad to partition 2. Asterix 190 again. But this time hit the 2 button for partition 2. 
Then zero to enable all sounds. Asterix 99 to exit programming mode. We have one last subject to cover. The power requirements I mentioned earlier. Looking at the schematic on the door of the Vista panel, it shows the maximum output power is 600 milliamps. Since the 6160 pulls 150 milliamps maximum power, you can see adding the currents together for just four keypads will reach that limit. Remember to take into account all components hooked up to that circuit. This includes expansion modules, smoke detectors, motion detectors, glass breakage detectors, and so on. Once you exceed 600 milliamps, you need to install a supplemental power supply. It looks something like this. And of course, that power supply needs a backup battery of its own. Speaking of batteries, remember this chart from part one? This is how we figured out how big of a battery to select for backup power. Well, now that you have more current draw, you need to go back and recalculate your battery size. Your keypad spends most of its time in standby mode, or 40 milliamps. So just add that to the total current draw on your table. Previously, I had a 4 amp hour battery installed. It was good for 45 milliamps, which was one keypad. Now I need to increase to the next size up battery, 7 amp hour. Since this is backup power, it's not necessary, but it is proper. Time for my disclaimer. I am not a professional alarm installer. I'm just some guy that likes to learn new stuff and pass it on to others. Thanks for watching.